Hi, welcome to my channel, Richman Poor Tech. I'm Richman, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a quality panelled wall like this one that you can see behind me. So, if you want to see all the steps needed to actually get a quality finish, then uh, please watch this video. So, in this video, I'm going to use show you how to plan the wall, um, what materials to use, what tools are used to do the wall, and also to get to this finish at the end here. Um, now I have seen some other videos on YouTube where the quality seems a bit suspect so if you're looking at actually doing a quality job then please watch this video and I'll show you all the steps that are used to get this wall. So this video is very comprehensive so I've made it into chapters but I have edited it as short as I can without missing any of the steps. Um, if you want to skip to the next part then please do. There's also timings in the description below along with all the links to the tools and the materials that are used if that helps. So first off, you need, need, need a smooth flat wall. I'm assuming you've had one, but here's a link to a, a separate video of mine where I actually prepared this wall in the first place. So on to planning. Material selection. Um, now we use 9mm thick MDF. Now I know MDF sometimes gets associated with cheap furniture, but MDF is the best material to use in this instance. It's stable. It doesn't shrink, it doesn't expand and it doesn't crack like saw and timber will do. And has a smooth finish that can be easily painted, plus it also happens to be a good value as well. So we'll be sticking this to the wall, but more on this later. But this also reduces the chance of piercing an um, electric cable or water pipe. So we purchased two full sheets from a local builder's merchant and had, had it cut into 10 centimetre wide strips on its length. Unfortunately, we needed two sheets from our um, builder's merchants because we needed a couple of strips from our second board. So when planning, check for things like um, plug sockets or uh, electric switches that might be in the way. Um, you may be able to adjust the, either the number of the panels or the size to actually miss them. So first, measure your wall uh, length and height. Take your wall uh, width measurement uh, minus the, the um, size of one of your strips, for example, 10 centimeters, and divide the remaining number of vertical panels so in my case it was seven this will give you the vertical measurements of each of your boards now that will be to the edge of the board then for your horizontals we decided that we wanted to remove the skirting board for a clean look to the wall and the 10 centimeter wide strip also matched the height of our skirting board so to do this we took a bit of the MDF and we used a multi-tool flush on the wall um, to cut into the skirting board that was already fixed now this happens to be one of my most commonly used tools but if you want to keep your skirting board, then take your measurements from the top of the skirting. We obviously measured from the floor. So measure your height minus your um, strip width, so that was 10 centimeters, and divide the number of horizontal panels, in our case four. This gave a portrait look to our wall panels, but if we wanted a landscape look, then we could have added five panels high or had less vertical strips. The choice is obviously yours. So we know the uh, measurements, time to cut the top and the bottom rails, the strips are not long enough for, to cut, for one piece to cover the whole width of the wall. So then as you do with skirting, etc., using a compound miter saw, cut the join on a 45 degree bevel. This will allow for a larger gluing surface, which is both stronger and less likely to crack. And also invisible join once done. All our other cuts will be at 90 degrees. First thing to do, cut off the tube. And I'm working quickly. So you could use something like no more nails, but something like no more nails does actually cost a lot more. And this is what the trade use. There we go, that's stuck in place now. Okay, onto the longer one. So get rid of that excess. And then, same as before. OK, 
again working quick. So since I stuck the uh, horizontals on the top and on the bottom, um, all I've done is I've taped along the top and the bottom with some masking tape, um, a strip, and then on that strip, following my information that I've printed, I've measured and marked off on the bottom one where the um, vertical rails are gonna go. So as you can see here, I've got my laser level, which I'm going to use when I'm um, I'm going to use when I'm actually going to stick the rails onto the wall. But I've got my laser level, and from the bottom marking, I can mark where the rail is going to go at the top, so I get a straight edge. Now, using a laser level gives you a lot more accurate, a lot more accurate job than using just a spirit level, because with the spirit level, you're judging where that bubble is and over distance and as you move along the wall you can actually be out so I, I thoroughly recommend laser levels this one i've got here is a bosch uni level two sorry uni level three so at the moment as you can hopefully you can see the laser line on the wall so i've marked off the first where the first rail is going to go so now i'm going to move along to the next one so i've got my marking on the bottom now i'm just going to go up and mark where it's going to go on the top Move along to my next marking. So it's on the next marking now, self leveled. And this will make it a lot easier when we're sticking the verticals on. And just continue to go along the wall. So I can see, I'm going to keep the laser level on while I'm doing it. Um, and I've pre cut all the uh, verticals and number the verticals because although, believe it or not, there's um, less than a millimetre gap from one side to the other, uh, to get a, a nice fit, each vertical is actually uh, cut individually and just shaved off so it fits in nice and, and tight. <clears throat> so time to stick the verticals in place. Now, in the first instance on the horizontals, I used pink grip. Now pink grip um, is a very quick grab adhesive and on this one, on the verticals here, I'm actually going to use grip fill. There's a little bit more working time with grip fill so it just allows me just to move it a bit if I need to uh, once I've done that. I'll just uh, take the end off this. So obviously you don't need too big a bead. <clears throat> So I'm going for something like that. Like I say, I've marked all the uprights or all the uh, verticals with numbers on so I know exactly where they're going to go before I start the gluing. Just going along in a wiggly line. So on this one, 
just need to put the bottom in first. Uh, just knocking it flash, flash, knocking it flush. That laser line is right on the corner of the uh, upright. So that's the first one done. Move the laser to the next upright. So I'll get plank number two. So I've measured to the bottom with a tape measure. So the marks on the top are actually just as a guidance for when I was cutting the wood. But uh, when I put this in, I'll be following the uh, laser line. Start doing the next bead. Again, just tap it down in place. So there's the second one done. Now, I don't know if you can see, but the laser's right on the edge. In fact, it's actually splitting the laser. So a bit is on the wall and a bit is on the edge. So you know it's right on the edge there. So I'm, I'm uh, rather particular on my DIY, as you can probably see here. But this is one of the reasons why I recommend a laser level. Now, this laser level um, is a self-leveling self laser level, so it is so much quicker to use than some of the cheap Chinese ones. Again, the link in the description below. So I'll just continue with the next ones. So, so board number three. So there's the first tube gone. So I've done what well, five uprights. As you can see, this is where my planning at the beginning came dividends. So I'm going to miss this um, plug socket. So again, board number six. I've marked at the bottom, so I know it's six and not nine. Although I haven't actually got nine. On this. That's an advantage from having a self leveling laser if you have to try and level this up. Glue would have be enough by then. This movement you wouldn't be able to do if you used the pink grip. So they both have their the pros and the cons. So there you go, there's the uprights done. Now some people might just leave this as the style of wall they're going for, give it a paint and um, just have the vertical stripes but we're going for the uh, sort of more like the shaker style and more of the squares. So again with the laser level on, just marking where the next panels are going to go. So just continue going on the wall until you've got all your markings. So I've got them top and bottom for each individual plank. So today's a new day. I've pre-cut all the um, 
all the horizontals and I've test fitted them in place to make sure that they fit. Although this wall is done and it's accurate within the millimeter, um, there are microns difference between the, the, uh, the gaps. So each bit has been cut and made sure that it fits, it fits nice and snug. So I've got the horizontals. So at the moment they're just pushed in. Now, what I've also done is I've also put the tape on and the number so I know exactly which place it goes. So when I come to stick it, it'll all be stuck um, in the right place. So I've got them all set up. I'll just take that one off as well. So I've got it all set up. I'm gonna turn on the laser. I'm gonna turn off the lights so you can probably see the laser a bit easier and also I can see a bit easier and put my glasses and start sticking the horizontals. So again, I'm sticking these horizontals on with grip fill. Now you can get a solvent free grip fill, but this takes a little bit longer to set. So I'm sticking with the original. This one doesn't smell as bad as that one. So, But again, compared to using like the pink grip, I have a bit more working time. Again, I've taped up the wall and pre-marked some guidance lines so I know where I am. Again, it's on the tape, so if you make a mistake, you can pull off the tape and put a new piece on. So I've lined it up on the marks. This is the top of the, the panel that we're gonna do. And we're gonna go along and do all the horizontals with the laser line first. That way we get everything straight going across. So again, I know that I'm the right way up because I've got the tape on, just in case there's any differences. So I'm like saying I'm a bit too high there. First one's in place. Now the, the laser line, I've got half the laser line on the wood and half on the wall. So I know that's perfectly level, all on perfectly level as it goes across. So now on to the next one. Again, I've got the tape on, so I know exactly which piece it is. Again, putting the bead of uh, grip fill up and down so that balances out the wood as you go across. So I've done the first row. You can see the laser line is all just on the top of the um, horizontals and on the wall as well. So I know that's perfectly level. So we'll adjust the uh, laser level and we'll do the next row. So adjust the laser level and we'll do the third row. Again, with the laser level on the marks that I marked off earlier. We now go and do the final row. So just in case you're wondering, this was just one tube for all those horizontals. Let's see what I've got left. And I've probably still got that much left in the tube. As you can see, the laser line going across the wall. But as you can see, this is what I mean by it's half on the wall and half on the wood. So next we're gonna fill any uh, joins here. So I'm gonna use some Ronsil wood filler. And this is a two part filler, a bit like a, a um, car bodywork filler. So you've got the uh, hardener that you have to mix in. So I'm using an onion board, just makes life easier. So with a bit of, um, bit of filler, put the, uh, lid back on the hardener. Now, what a lot of people don't know about filler, but you learn this from uh, doing car body work, do not whip it. So you want to keep it nice and smooth like this. Now with the hardener, you keep it, once you've done it, you keep it in a, uh, not in a heap, it's more spread out, and then it gives you a bit longer working time. So just get the hardener in. You don't want to whip it because then you get air in your filler. So 
So when you build it up to like a lump on the top, you end up having it um, all heats up. So, and when it heats up, it's going off. So if you keep it spread out, on your board like this you'll end up having longer working time so just go around and fill any joins so i'm not going to show you on every one but you get the idea So another tip, use plastic spatulas once you're finished. Just put them in the, um, the filler, peel off a sheet and wait for that to go off. So you put them on the filler, when the filler goes hard and, and whatever, you can just snap it off the plastic filler applicators and therefore you keep them clean. If you use the metal ones, it sort of bonds onto the metal and um, you have to like, start from, um, basically you just have to get rid of them and buy new ones. So the next is to sand down the filler. So I've got a dual action sander. So just in case you're wondering, I've used 120 grit on the uh, sanding. So all the filler has now been sanded down. So as you can see, the panels are pretty close to the wall. So I'll just go down onto this one. So you can see the panels or the strips are pretty close to the wall. So, but we're still gonna caulk them. So as mentioned on my other video, when it came to do with sealants, um, it's pretty important to have a good gun. So this is a um, no-nonsense gun that I've picked up from Screwfix, uh, Warcraft do another gun. So this one takes the trade size cartridges. Now there's, there's two rules of thought when it comes to caulking. Either cut at an angle or cut straight across. Doesn't really matter. Um, it's up to your own personal preferences. But what we do want is this gap here is very small. So we want a very small amount of cork to come out of the gun. So we don't want to cut it off here and have a wide bit. We want pretty much the smallest amount we can actually get out of this gun because it's, it is right in the corners that we're just trying to just fill those little hairline cracks. So I don't know if you can see there. So I've just nipped the end off nice and small. So I can get right in there and get that bead right in the corner. So I've got straight into it. Now, one of the advantages of this gun is I can actually rotate the barrel or the handle. Right, so with the gun caulking, so I get the tip into the corner. So pull an easy bead, move down. If you move quicker, you get a neater bead. Get a silicone on your finger. Get your cloth. Wipe, wipe. So now I'm going on to the top bit. So a bit of a thicker gap on this side, so we're just going to go a bit slower and put a bit more cork in. So again, finger.
and then with a cloth. Just wipe off any excess. So we're not using sealant like silicon for like a shower. So just trying to get it right in those cracks that get a nice neat job. And then with a the cloth, And with a cloth, just wipe off the excess. So now the corks had time to dry, so it's all dry. I don't know if you can see it in here. So it's all smooth and dry. So now is the time to start painting the undercoat. So as we've got bare MDF here, um, time to put on some undercoat on the wood. So I've got a primer undercoat. Now I'm using Dulux Primer Undercoat. I uh, thoroughly recommend Dulux paints. So I'll go more into that when we're t doing the top coat. But um, because it's the bare MDF, MDF is quite a, a porous um, sort of like wood grain there. So it soaks in the paint and stuff. So we're going over all the MDF with the Primer Undercoat. So as you can see here, I've taped up the, uh, the wall, which we pre-painted. And um, now I'll just start with the undercoat. So I've actually pulled back the, uh, the carpet because um, we are having a new carpet, but in the process of lockdown and that, we thought we'd get all this done first. Okay. Obviously the preparation is the, uh, the key to a good, to a good um, finish. Obviously any runs that show at this stage will also show on your final coat. So make sure you don't get any runs. So as I'm continuing to go along using a roller to give a nice finish, obviously painting in all the corners first. Because we don't want any brush marks So obviously I've used a mini roller. All right, so now the wall's all prepared now for the, the fun bit where you transform and, and pick your color. I've already taped up the uh, walls with masking tape. Now I use um, frog tape, so that's a stain blocking masking tape so you get no paint bleeding underneath. Um, so I'll have a video up here possibly but the paint that I 100% recommend, in fact, you could actually pay me to use another make and I'd still recommend Dulux, um, is obviously Dulux, as I just mentioned. Now, I also found that if we use Easy Care, which this one is, so I've, I've just started using Easy Care. Um, Easy Care is a paint that's a bit more hard wearing. So if you've got kids especially uh, that go around maybe with grubby fingerprints or you like to get sort of scuff marks on the walls where they kick off their shoes, etc. Easy Care is a tougher wearing paint where you can actually wipe those marks away. Um, but what we also found with white, especially, 
it has a slightly high reflective property. So the colour we're using to paint this wall is, there we go, Grey Steel 3. So this is a, a paint that was mixed. We had it mixed in, um, in home base. So this is Grey Steel 3. Um, but obviously whatever colour you pick is up to you. So this is the colour we picked. So we're going to crack on and start painting the wall. So again, make sure you use a good quality brush. So I tend to like these Harris brushes. You don't want to be losing bristles or um, like sprayed brush heads. So a good brush like these Harris brushes make all the difference. Of course, go on and roll as much as you can. So that gives you a better finish. Also uses less paint. All right, so I'll show you a close up of the wall in a second, but this is the wall finished. So please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in another video. So here's the wall finish. You can see a close up of all the joints where they've all been caught and it's had three coats of paint.